Well, I burned out in 1996. I had, I had enough. Uh, and uh, just sort of learned by doing on, on PC stuff and computers, just sort of went to sleep, as I say, and buried my concerns and feelings about the, uh, you know, about the issues and worked on uh, making money, raising a family. And I uh, actually built a house with my wife in 1999 with Deborah, and I uh, got a little bit of attitude from people I used to work with and taking the uh, uh, you know, habitat in suburbia. My attitude was it was gonna be taken no matter what anyway, so uh, you know, what's, what's the big deal? I thought I was doing the right thing by you know, spending the extra money and doing an uh, energy efficient water heater and the most efficient, or a better, in terms of efficiency, natural gas furnace. And I thought that was, uh, that was good enough uh, at the time. In the center of Glenmont, as it's as it's called, and you can you can bike or walk to a lot of a lot of places, which is which is good. So, uh, um, if indeed the uh, peak whale issue comes comes to fruit, it's a, it's a good place to be because it's a lot of close proximity to places for commerce and things. There was a power outage in August of 2003. That was the entire Northeast, and uh, the, the power here was only out for, for a few hours, but it, 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 it totally changed me. It got me thinking about, you know, there's only now, and things that I'm passionate about and things I care about, you know, they can, you can always think about them to be later on and down the road, and that'll never happen. You know, so I decided to, uh, to look into it. So, you know, got on the internet, and there's a lot of commerce obviously available on the internet, and um, saw that, this uh, New York State Energy Research Development Authority, NYSERDA, they actually will pay for half of the system. So that made it a no-brainer, or more of a no-brainer, to, uh, uh, to, to go forward. <laughs> so my awareness of solar from when I was at Environmental Advocates was that you totally had to redo your house. You know, if you had, uh, you know, all your appliances wouldn't work, because uh, all our appliances that we plug into the wall are alternating current, or AC, you know? And solar doesn't work that way, solar is DC. So, you know, new lights, new dishwasher, new refrigerator, and that's crazy. But once I found out there's a thing called an inverter, where it's this box that will make the electricity turn into what the sun produces into what your house can use, that, again, was more of a no-brainer uh, on, on the positive side to, to move forward. And I had the home equity, you know. To me, it was, it was paying myself back of um, using resources that were locked up, financial resources that were locked up in the house. I mean, what a better use of of um, the home's value to, to increase its value and to, you know, go, get as close to you can as, to zero in terms of carbon production. So I found three, four um, companies uh, that I brought in to do a proposal. I said, you know, tell me what I need and what the what the costs are. Um, I ended up pick, picking a company out of uh, Vermont called Grow Solar because they seemed the most um, amicable and the most professional. It didn't hurt that they were the best price, but they you know, really took me along in terms of explaining what's involved with it. And one of the first things they said is, you need to look at your energy use now. You, know, you're, you're, you don't even know it, but you're wasting a lot of energy. And if you focus on it, you can eliminate your waste. Why spend tens of thousands of dollars to produce power that you then waste? It's crazy. So um, went through the house and changed all the lights to compact fluorescent, and that actually eliminated two kilowatt hours worth of, worth of uh, needed production um, and, uh, and I think we were using like 19 kilowatt hours a day now we're using 15 so we got it down four a day which doesn't seem like a lot but each kilowatt is um, almost two pounds of carbon dioxide so it adds up so, uh... Uh, well all three of uh, the three or four that I looked at they gave me a proposal in terms of what's what the system's going to be, what the what the what the cost is, and uh, this was in the fall of 2003, and so I signed a contract with Grosso, and they gave me an extra percentage off to uh, give them a down payment in the fall, it's basically so they can gear themselves up for for spring. So it was like March, April, that in 2004 that they that they came. It was like two three days, if that. It was really quick. So they just you know climbed up on the roof and put uh, 24 solar panels on the house. And little did I know, because I'm really bad with direction, that the house is perfectly south. The, uh, the long axis of the back of the house is exactly solar south, which, you know, you, it couldn't be better. I mean, yeah, we, there's some trees, which are uh, an issue, and um, there's, we always joke of eco-terrorism to our neighbors, 
Um, I even asked a couple of neighbors, neighbors that I'd help uh, cut down some trees. Um, the ones that they wanted to take down, if they can take down, if I would pay to take down other ones, they look at me like I have three heads. You know, but you, you never know unless you ask. Well, they expected to be 100% assuming that we changed our stove from electric to natural gas, and we changed our clothes dryer from electricity to natural gas, but there was a cost necessary. It wasn't easy to get a natural gas line to the second floor because that's where our laundry room is. Um, and my attitude was like, well, it's, it's a shell game. Why bother incurring the expense of a new stove and a new dryer and the expense of getting the fuel to that new dryer when it would be carbon producing? Um, yeah, it wouldn't be 100%, but at least some or all, depending on the, on the weather of that particular time that we're using the stove or using the dryer, there would be renewable power that would be doing it. So it didn't end up being 100%. I think the first year it was 65% of, uh, of the power that we made. Um, is what we used. It's always cool to watch the meter go backwards. I'd bring my neighbors over when I first turned it on to show them what it, what it meant, and it kind of hurt their brain. And you know, it was pretty much telling them the electricity coming out of my house right now is going in your refrigerator if your refrigerator is on, and that kind of you know made people pause and sort of think. It kind of hurt their brain too. You know, I'm actually the house here is a power plant. You know, most of the time the whole purpose of why. It's, it's, uh, it's funded. The New York State Energy Research Development Authority funds the, um, uh, gives a, a personal incentive to, to homeowners to, to, to do this, is when is the sun at its, at its brightest and its most productive? In the summertime, lunchtime, noon. Well, when is the highest drain on the grid, mainly because of air conditioning, summertime, middle of the day? So having distributed power, um, have each individual home, as many homes as possible, businesses as well, produce their own power, it's decentralized and it helps reduce uh, brownouts um, and not, not to mention that's, that obviously it's renewable power and clean power, uh, it's a good thing. But so when we're not at home, you know, five days uh, a week and we're producing power, it's being credited back into the grid and the neighbors literally are, are using those electrons that are being produced. And so from a homeowner's perspective, my perspective, the grid's the battery, right? And so when we come home at night, we'll end up using what we credited during the day, and the ultimate goal might uh, depends on how you look at me. If, if it's an obsession or a passion, is to get it to zero, to, to net zero. The amount that, that we family uses in a year um, equals the amount that we produced so renewably. Tied into the grid. Yeah, that's re that's a requirement to get the New York State Energy Resource Development Authority money. You have to be producing power as a decentralized source to put into the grid. I originally looked at batteries. You know, um, as a as a means of protection. You know, if the power goes out, because it really hurt my brain. If the power does go out, like right now, it's a beautiful sunny day. I'm probably um, making 80 percent of the power I can make is being made from the solar panels. If the grid goes down, it shuts off. And so I have all this potential, and I can't do it. And that's for safety reasons. It needs to be a place for that energy to go to, and you would need a battery system um, to keep the system going. And even in that situation where you had batteries, you still um, uh, the system would still shut out off potentially to the, uh, the grid connection. The grid has to be there for the system to be up. Um, only a critical load would work if I did the batteries. It was extra money and I sort of gives you no money uh, at all, so financially it was a little bit more difficult for me to make that decision, so I decided against it on the, on the first round. <laughs>